الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله إن شاء الله تعالى I'm going to make this video in hopes to answer a question which I get asked often as well as I see asked often on social media sites and that is how do I study Arabic or how long will it take for me to reach a certain level Inshallah ta'ala, I've answered this before, but my channel was deleted, so we're going to try to do that here. And first and foremost, we need to know that learning the Arabic language is divided up into four subjects. Reading, listening, conversating, and writing. And this is the order, inshallah ta'ala, that we should be studying and putting our effort towards reading, listening, conversating, writing. Before listening to the rest of the answer, subscribe to the channel and hit the like button. When I was in the Arabic program in the University of Kuwait, the teacher Ibrahim told us that if we wanted to be proficient then we needed to study 10 hours a day. And that's how he used to study when he was in England studying English, that he would study 10 hours a day. And he divided it up amongst these four categories, reading, listening, conversating, and writing. Now, he said that we should do a four, three, two, one pyramid. Four hours of reading. Read, read, read. Even if you don't understand what you're reading, read. The constant review or coming across certain words will show you the importance of those words. And they will uh, become stuck in your mind. And take some time every once in a while to look up a word. Maybe at the end of a page, look up the words you don't know. But not every time you don't know a word, you stop and look it up. No. Four hours of reading. And the next should be three hours of listening, listening to that language, whether that be through the radio or television or lectures or whatever the case might be, three hours of listening. The next is two hours of conversating. Find someone that you can conversate with. If you're not able to conversate with anyone because there's no one around you or it's difficult, then conversate with yourself. I remember seeing a clip on YouTube about an Indian man who had learned the Arabic language by himself and he uh, didn't have anyone to practice with, so he used to practice with himself and with his sister that every time he would talk to his sister when they would have dinner or whatever the case might be, everything he wanted to say to her, he would say it to her in Arabic and then in Urdu or whatever language they spoke. Even though his sister had no idea what he was saying when he spoke in Arabic, he was using his Arabic to the best of his ability. Another example I've seen someone talk about taking their hairbrush and looking in the mirror. Here, a remote. Take it like it's a microphone and you can interview, interview, interview yourself. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Kayfa halak. Alhamdulillah. Ana bi khair. Wa anta. Alhamdulillah. Masmuk. Ismi Mustafa. Wa masmuk. Ismi Abu Muawiyah. And just talk back and forth. Use what you can from your conversation. If you don't have anyone to practice with. And with the internet today. You might have to spend a few dollars. Uh, but there are plenty of uh, Facebook groups where people will practice with you for free. And then there's writing. Write whatever it is. Write your lesson today. Write a page of the Mus'haf. Write a hadith. Write a page of the book that you're reading. Whatever it might be, write. Four hours of reading. Three hours of listening. Two hours of conversating. And one hour of writing. Now, maybe someone says, I don't have that much time. I don't have 10 hours a day. Well, then let's make it five hours a day. And it doesn't have to be all at once, of course. This four-hour 
uh, uh, four hours of reading doesn't have to be one four hour block of time. It can be broken up into four separate hours or whatever might be feasible for a person. So, but if they only say, I only have five hours, right? Then they would do two hours of reading, one and a half hours of listening, one hour of conversating, and a half hour of writing. Then someone else might say, but I don't have five hours. I don't have five hours. Okay, two and a half hours a day. Let's cut that five hours into half. Two and a half hours a day. I'm going to do one hour of reading, 45 minutes of listening, a half hour of conversating, and 15 minutes of writing. Every single day, five days a week. We'll say five days a week. Someone says, I don't have two and a half hours to learn the language a day. Then you should go pick another hobby. You should go find something else to do. Something else that you want to do besides learning the Arabic language. Because the Arabic language is going to require an English speaking person this type of time. The official government agency in the United States which teaches Arabic to its foreign diplomats says that it takes 2,200 hours of continuous practice to learn the Arabic language. 2,200 continuous hours. That's five days a week, 52 weeks a year, until it will end up being around a year and a half of five hours a day, every day of the five days a week, every week in the year for a year and a half. 2,200 hours. Let's just put that on a student's schedule where they are off in the summer and have a few breaks throughout the year. Five hours a day, 10 months out of the year will take you two years to learn the Arabic language. So if you were to do this in 10 hours a day, then you could achieve an advanced level of Arabic in one year. It's possible. And of course, remember, we're talking about an English speaking person who maybe has not learned another language. If you've learned another language or if you have another language as your uh, uh, mother tongue, such as Urdu or Somali or maybe Farsi, then this will make learning the Arabic language easier because you've already maybe achieved some words and some grammar rules and such. But if you are speaking the English language as your mother tongue and you have not learned one of these languages which is similar to uh, Arabic, then this Foreign Institute for Language Services says 2,200 hours. That's five hours a day, 10 months out of the year, going to take you two years. You times that 10 hours a day, it would take you one year or 10 months. And this is feasible. However, the more you spread it out, I'm going to take that 10 and make it five or that five and make it two and a half, right? Or that two and a half, I'm going to make it just two and a half on the weekends only or Saturday only. Then this is going to prolong these 2,200 hours because this is 2,200 hours, which is uh, intensive, you're not giving your chance, as yourself a chance to forget. You're bombarding yourself with the language. Whereas if you reduce it to an hour a week, two hours a week, then it's just not going to be 2,200 hours because the gaps in between are going to be so much bigger and it's going to cause you to forget, have to review stuff that you would not have to review if you had put in more time and more hours in a day and a week. So the formula is four three, two, one. Four hours of reading, three hours of listening, two hours of conversating, and one hour of writing. As we said, the reading can be the Quran. It can be Hadith. It could be a thick book. It could be the newspaper. It could be uh, a website. 
Your listening can be done in your commute. It could partially be listening to Quran or listening to Tafsir or listening to Sheikh Saleh al Fawzan or Sheikh Ubaid al Jabari. Ubaid al Jabari is super clear. He's super clear and he's very simple in his speech. He breaks it down, makes it easy for the listener. And there are others who do that as well. Find a listener, train your ear. It makes your reading better. Your reading makes your listening better. Conversate, even if you have to pick up your remote or your hairbrush and talk to yourself and interview yourself in the mirror, as I said. And then write, write the Quran, write the surah you're memorizing, write a hadith that you're studying, write uh, something from the newspaper. Just write, write, write. This is going to improve. I found that when the teacher would tell me to write something, if I wrote it out ahead of time, and then the next day I came to present it, I was much more capable of presenting, even though everything that was on paper was from mind and I never referenced the dictionary. That's because on the paper I get a chance to write and erase and reorder and re rewrite it again. And now I kind of own it. It's as if I own those words. I own those sentences. I own those paragraphs and ideas that I want to say. And so now when it's time for me to say it, I can do so. Once I wrote it. Right? So, likewise, each one of these skills helps and assists the other. Listening to a khutbah or a class that you do not understand. If you remember when you were first learning Aleph, Ba, Ta, assuming that you're above that level now, right? That you can read the Mus'haf pro proficiently or something like this. That you didn't know when you looked at the Mus'haf where a word started and where it ended. You just knew how to read. Then you learned that if it's a tenween, that's the end of a word. Or if it had uh, un, and we know that the noon connects to the letter after it, and yet it wasn't connected, that this is the end of a word. You started to learn where ends of words were, and then you could start to pick out a word and like this. Likewise, listening is the same way. Listening, maybe everything sounds all jumbled up and mumbled together, jumbled together in one bunch. However, by listening over and over and over, and then maybe if you have a chance to listen to something that you're reading, Maybe it's the audio book of uh, Adda Ad with Dawa of Ibn Qayyim, for example. The audio book of it. Follow along, reading it. This will help you to now distinguish individual words, which will allow you to pick them out. Therefore, ask about them and understand them better. Conversating. This will help you to use these words, and this will help you to grow them. And writing likewise. All of these help each other uh, and they're not to be learned on their own. As we said, this 2,200 hours is, if you do it in two and a half hours a day and take breaks in the summer and you know winter breaks and Ramadan breaks or Hajj breaks, it's going to take you around four years to become advanced. Two and a half hours a day, five days a week, right? And anything less than that is going to take a lot longer. And you can't consider yourself a serious student of knowledge if you're not putting in this time. And we should not have the excuse that I learn better in a classroom or I only learn one-on-one, uh, -on -one, all right? If you don't have that opportunity, then you have to make do. I only work, you know, I only work good when I have steel toe boots and gloves and, and safety goggles. But if I don't have that and I have to pay bills, I'm going to work in my sandals if I have to. Because this is what I'm trying, I, it's something I need to do. I need to pay my bills. Likewise, I need to learn this language. I need to understand the book of Allah and the sunnah of his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, without an intermediary, without someone telling me what, what was said. Rather, I can understand it in its original language. So, this is the schedule. Four hours of reading, three hours of listening, two hours of conversating, and one hour of writing. And if you're going to divide that into five hours a day, cut those numbers in half. Two, one and a half, one and a half. And if you're going to divide that down to two and a half hours a day, then one, 45, one hour, 45 minutes, 30 minutes, 15 minutes in this order. 
Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless you. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to teach you what will benefit you and to make you sincere and to make you understand his book and the sunnah of his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.